Welcome to Santaroga Surplus. This is a continuation on our VZ50 disassembly, maintenance, and I don't know, call it an armorer's course, our project. This is the slide off of our project pistol. I've cleaned it up a little bit. Actually, I've cleaned it up quite a lot. And we're going to examine what we need to do to strip the slide fairly completely. There are two things I don't want to do today. So one thing, that you may notice is on your pistol is that the front sight is permanently mounted. Um, there is enough metal here you could probably cut a dovetail but it does appear to be either machined in place or possibly soldered. I haven't looked close enough to see if it's hard soldered in. Um, you've got your machining here for your anti-glare. Your import marks are usually going to be on the slide on this side on the slide on this side or on the frame here or here. There's not really a whole lot of room here so I've never seen one actually done here but you can do it on that side of the frame. Um, I believe that doing it on the slide is no longer common practice because the ATF prefers you actually use the frame. The serial number is going to be on the right hand side of the slide and it will be right behind the frame serial number which is visible through the ejection port when the pistol is assembled. You have a dovetail sight, it's not a standard dovetail um, but you can, it's a, it's a pretty easy one to make, remake um, and you could mill out a more standard dovetail if you wanted to. The sights are okay. They're they're okay. Um, I've had the small military sights that were better. Excuse me for one moment. <laughs> Such as, believe it or not, the P64. But these are easy to acquire and they work pretty well. This is your ejector. I don't know if you're close enough to see this. We'll get into detail with all of the parts as we go. That's your ejector. As it moves out to catch a shell, the loaded chamber indicator slides out and you can feel it and see it. It's actually a very positive item. And that is connected by a little cam here. There's a pin and a spring for the ejector. We'll remove that soon. The firing pin mechanism is in here and we're going to remove that first. It is a free-floating firing pin with a spring-loaded retainer that pulls the firing pin back and locks it in place when the firearm is on safe or the hammer is down pretty much any time except at the moment of the sear release. It's a very safe system, but it's also very simple. The first thing you're going to need to do, if you can see this, is push down that part and hold it and then the firing pin will slide out that way and you lift this gently out because there is a spring under there but the spring is pretty solidly attached to the moving part the block and doesn't tend to fall out and go flying across the shop so that pushes down and when you do push this down can you see when you do push this down, it allows the hammer to push the firing pin forward. On a, because it's a free floating, if it's clean, it will just drop forward on its own. I don't know if you can see that. Problem with the videos is I don't have a really good camera person handling the detail work. So, first thing to do, this is easier if you put this in a vise but we're going to do it video style. Push that catch in and the firing pin should just drop out. Remember this is our cosmoline piece so we're still in the process of cleaning everything out and I'm going to give it a little start poking the firing pin
There it goes. You can see it's part way out. I'll push the cam again, the keeper again, and you should be able to just get it to drop out. And then this doesn't just fly out, it tends to stick a little bit. Whoops. And that's it. This right here is the piece, spring. This is the firing pin. The firing pin goes in, sits like that. Firing pin goes in this way, sideways in the pistol. And when this goes down, that is allowed to move forward. And when it presses back up, it slides on this ramp and pulls the firing pin back. If you ever have problems with this, you might want to check the smoothness of that ramp or of the plug. And even though I've already cleaned this out, it still seems to have Cosmoline going on. Cosmoline can last for a long time unless you get deep cleaning tools out. I will probably deep clean this at some point in the future when I'm not on video. But one of your basic things to do is get into that channel poke your wadding material whether it be paper towels or fabric in that's too sharp and WD-40 does loosen this stuff it's actually really good stuff it, it tends to dissolve the cosmoline very efficiently and effectively and it is a very good rust preventative coating but it is not fantastic as a lubricant because it carries grit in it and that's a problem to put this back in you no nope, you do this first and it goes facing up, okay? You want it to face the, the track. The reason why is because there is a piece in the pistol. It is this piece right here, part of the trigger mechanism, that will raise, see that raise? It's raised when the trigger's pulled back, okay? And that is what pushes the bar up and allows the firing pin to move. So in this configuration, the firing pin cannot move. Not only is the hammer stuck in a rear spot, because the hammer only goes forward all the way when the trigger is depressed, but hammer safety, but the firing pin cannot move until that sear component is raised, okay? I don't know what it's called. And when you function, when you operate the decocker, you'll notice that it goes up at one point. Okay, but at that point, the hammer is only halfway down. Okay. It it looks dodgier than it is. If you really track it and play with it, you'll find out, figure out that it's a very safe decocking mechanism. The gun is absolutely safe to carry, cocked and hammer down, well, sorry, loaded and hammer down, because you have you have both of those safeties. This makes it drop safe. You can't make the firing pin move. So, firing pin goes back in. First you put the plug in. Now, the half moon side is facing the side that has the raised track. That raised track is there because that's where your sear component that moves the trigger, moves the firing pin out of the way is going to be. It's going to run along that track. Then you push that down. You can use a long thin punch. Um, this screwdriver happens, this flat screwdriver happens to be a very good tool for these pistols. This goes in this direction, because it's offset, so it can pass through. And as soon as it is in all the way, 
you're good to go. It's a free floating firing pin and when it's loose, see, firing pin drops down. You can see from the back when I press the release and then it pops back up. Don't know if you can see that. It's one of the problems I'm having with my videos. Next component, and we'll go ahead and take this back out for cleaning. Whoops. When I, I'm gonna have to hammer on my table a little bit, and I don't know if that's going to affect the video because the tripod mount is on another section of the bench. Press, pull, out. There's your components. Spring, plug, firing pin. The ejector is held in with a pin. That's fairly traditional. That's how they, most of these work. And the pin goes in from the bottom and comes out from the top. There's a cutout. It's going to be very difficult, but I'm going to try. There's a cutout in the slide rail for the pin. You can see it on yours. This is the part where I'm going to shake things up a little bit, but I have to hit it. We're going to get out Puff. Puff is a very special hammer. This is my Puff hammer. If I ever have to do the zombie apocalypse, when I run out of ammo, I will be using this hammer, according to my children, to brain the zombies so that we can collect the government Puff bounties. That's an inside joke. So this just this comes out very easily. Now at this point, I'll warn you, this can spring out a little bit, but the spring is, is a, it's a hairpin spring, and it's not as big a deal as it would be on some other pistol models. It's a really well-designed pistol in a lot of ways. Not quite. Well, maybe. I can see the ejector coming out, so let's see if I can leave the pin captured. I'm just going to take it out. It did spring off this time, which it doesn't usually do. The way to fix that, of course, if you don't want it to spring off, is to just put your little clamp right there. The spring, this is your ejector itself. And it has four primary components. It has the ejector cutout right here. It has obviously the pivot pin hole. This milled section right here is for the hairpin spring which has a long arm and a short arm. The long arm goes in the ejector frame. The small arm presses against the slide. And then you have, lastly, this little channel right here. That channel is what the loaded chamber indicator rides on. The loaded chamber indicator comes right out, and it has a little nub on the bottom. And that nub goes in that channel, and that's how the ejector moving pushes the loaded chamber indicator out. That's it. That's all the pieces there are. Um, it's less susceptible to catastrophic disassembly when you start removing the pin than most blowback pistols. And it's very easy to replace. You want to start with sliding your loaded chamber indicator in. Make sure that the pin is facing down. And then this channel has no back, so you push it in there. Okay, make sure that your spring is sitting on the channel. Long side goes up here because it's going to be retained by your pivot pin. Push the whole thing together. The 
only problem you're likely to ever have with that is that this pin arm might lift. If it does, push it back in the channel. Once you're in the hole, Slipped up, just barely up. Once you're in the hole, you should be able to take a thin hammer or a punch if you're using a vise and start tapping the pin. And we have to start over. Slide into the loaded chamber indicator. Get the One of the things about Cosmoline is that I actually have a much easier time getting these things back in with the Cosmoline. There, now I can see. Keeping everything sticky. If the pin's not out all the way, you can't actually see your hole. Now, I can get everything lined up. Fairly exactly. My spring is not sitting flat at this time. There we go. Spring is sitting flat. Start the pin from the bottom. So starting the pin usually is pretty easy because you have a guide with the cutout in the slide there. Now I've got a press, finger pressed in slightly and a magnetic hammer. reason puff hammer is so important is that it gets into that little hole. You need to punch this pin down far enough to clear the slide rail, but it does not need to be flush. 
if it's flush, it's going to stick up pretty far through here. And you'll show you on one that has not been removed ever. It does stick up a significant amount and that channel just has nothing going through it. So this does not have to be flush right here on reassembly. Um, you don't want it to come up past that just for dirt reasons. That's it. Your ejector is now reassembled and if you push it out you'll see your loaded chamber indicator travels to the side. And that's really it. It's a lot fewer pieces than some blowbacks, and it tends to work very well. The hairpin spring tends to not fly away as much as some other springs do. And as long as that hairpin spring goes in, you're good to go. Firing pin back. Slide is ready to go. Have a good one.